take this panel, mm -hmm. you can see this is the monitor, and the monitor shows you, in this case it's showing you the amp hour draw. So the system's on, so it's drawing a half an amp. Okay. Okay. But you want me to just shift through? Sure. Okay. Yeah. I, it's a little hard to see. Sorry. But. So there's the man. That's the number of amp hours that have been used. Okay. From 100 from where we set it. Uh huh. That's the percentage that's in the battery. So it's 99.9. Yeah. So it's not quite full, but almost. Yep. That's the total number of amp hours. 240. And that's the voltage. Okay. Okay. So now, and now we're back to the draw. The draw turns out to be really the most interesting, and and eventually we'll actually put another gauge here that's got a much brighter display that will uh -huh. just show the draw. Uh huh. And because what you realize when you get out there, what you find is that by decreasing maybe a half or a quarter of a knot, mm -hmm. you may almost drop your draw in half. So you really can increase your how much time you're going to get out of the batteries. Okay. I mean, in a, in a general way, we figure between three and three and a half knots, we're going to get about four hours. Mm -hmm. When this reads zero, we actually have another 20% left in there. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it starts flashing low and everything, but they're still in there. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is the temperature con controller. Mm -hmm. th that's in centigrade, obviously. Mm -hmm. Okay, and, and I we can program that to come on anytime we want. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, this is a voltmeter that's actually this this voltmeter is hooked up now instead of this one, mm -hmm. and then this amp meter is not working. Okay. Okay. And that's an RPM counter. So with diesel engines, RPM is really important. Mm -hmm. But with electric, that's what's really important is the draw. Mm -hmm. So you look always looking at your draw against your boat speed. Gotcha. Okay. But we put the counter on there just so that we could we could see what was going on. All right, so we're headed out here, Jack. And uh, what was it you were just saying about this—the ability to go fast or slow with uh, so, revolutions? Yeah, so we can maneuver exactly as we want to. We don't have to keep putting it in and out of gear to to keep slow speeds because mm -hmm. the electric motor motor will turn as slow as you want it to. So this is a feathering propeller. Uh -huh. So in a moment, you're going to hear a clunk which before you might have thought was the transmission, but there is no transmission. Mm. It's literally the blades flipping around on the, on the propeller. And you, and you use the max prop because the more resistance it actually generates extra, uh, extra power, the max correct? We easy uh -huh. for two reasons. One, we could, we could easily repitch it so we could do any kind of experimenting we want. Mm -hmm. We can change gear ratios and then change the propeller and we can pitch the forward and reverse differently. Uh -huh. So we can actually pitch the reverse much more aggressive so that we get more regen or charging under sail. Mm -hmm. Wait, uh, it says we're going 3.7? Right yeah. Okay. And so what's it drawing at 3.7? Right then? now we're drawing 40, 43.6, 44.1. So we can hold this for longer than four hours. So we, yeah, we'd be able to hold this longer than and so let's, uh, and so this would be a nice cruising speed for going around the lake or getting point to point here, but let's say you wanted to go six knots. How, how much does that increase the draw? So the six knots is about as fast as we can go with this pitch. Uh -huh. If we pitched it a little bit more, we would get it. But you, the, if you look at a graph, it goes like that. It goes, it's very steep. Can we give it a try? Yes. yes. So I'm going to give it full. Okay, so it's up to goes up to like 157 and now you see it starts dropping right right away it's dropping okay so the draw just went up to 157 now it's down to 142 right and, and dropping until we're, at five, we're, we're at five we're at we're at five one. knots yeah okay and it's still increasing gotcha so we're definitely making good speed and and unlike a unlike a diesel which would really be chugging right now. This it's still just a little bit of prop noise is all That's all right. we're hearing. Yeah. Okay, so we've settled into a speed here that's around 5.5, and now the the amperage draws the boat has gotten underway and is more efficient is uh, about 131. Um, 
So if the max draw is about one one fifty, you were saying that means we could actually use more pitch in the in yeah. the propeller. Yeah, either that or or a different gear ratio. Obviously. And so I, we could tell by cycling through on the monitor, but uh, what uh, around how around how long could we run at this speed uh, with the with the current battery system? Uh, we get about ninety minutes or so. Uh, this. Okay, so yeah, it's 60 to 60 to 75 minutes at this speed, and then uh, remind me about charging. Uh, it, at this point, you'd have to have a generator or gen set on the boat in order to charge it underway. But well, we could obviously we could have solar panels. Solar, okay. We could have a wind generator. Generator. Uh, if we put the sails up, we'll, we can get charging. If, yeah, I don't think we have enough wind right now to get much out of it, but but yes, if we if we're sailing, we're going to be charging. Gotcha, because the prop is generating charge. That's right. Okay. And so what happens is the max prop actually goes into a reverse uh -huh. position, and that's why we can use the, put the pitch up whatever that we want on there for that. Right. There's nothing about the, you know, the 30 amp system is charging the batteries. You didn't have to change anything other than the battery charger that's included in the, the ecosystem. Okay. Nothing changed about how you charge the boat at the dock. We just have two battery chargers now. We have one for the house uh -huh. and one for the traction for the motor. Gotcha. So I, I pulled us back a little bit. Now we're at, at four, nine, and five. You can see we're down to 90. Wow, that's pretty amazing. So just a, a half knot reduction in speed and you're almost, you're 30% 30, 30 down in your draw. That's right. Yep. By just dropping it to a 50 amp draw, uh -huh. we, we only lost seven tenths of a knot. So we're still we're still doing 4.3 into the wind. Well, actually, we're a little lower than that. Okay. Yeah. 4.2. Yeah. So uh, we, man, now we have four hours. Yeah. So we're by by reducing it by seven tenths of a knot, we're down on the monitor to 50, which is which is a uh, four hour range. Yeah. Yeah. So, but the point is, is by coming down that little bit, you've increased your distance quite a bit because mm -hmm. you've added another hour. Right. Yep. So you can go, you can you can go five or six knots for an hour, but that means that your total your total distance on the batteries is six miles. Exactly. And if you go down to four knots at 50 amp draw, then you can then all of a sudden you can do 16 uh, 16 miles on this right. one Back charge. Right. Just a little more, you get to Okay. And and so. The thing that people, I think, have trouble with is that you really your amps are your gas, are your fuel. Yeah. So obviously we can increase the number of the size of the batteries, mm -hmm. battery range, which actually we're, we're talking about doing. Yeah. And then the other possi the other possibility is decreasing the physical size and the weight of the batteries, but increasing the amp hours by going to lithium. So you just say say what you said. This is a 200 amp hour set with those eight batteries in there, right? That's right. And so, how different would it be with lithium? So, if we went to a little bit bigger and a little bit heavier, we could go all the way to a thousand amp hours. Okay. At we, 40 we could get the same weight and less size for uh, 400 amp hours. Okay. Twice, so basically, twice as much. Money would get you twice as much amp hours in less space and the same weight. Yeah. And you can go all the way up to a thousand amp hours. In, that's going to be a little, probably a little more space and a little more of weight. But at that point, your your run time is you know, exponentially much. It's five times what it is now. How about and and how are the life of the batteries? How does that change? Are you more likely to have to replace a lithium battery? No, less, no? less no, likely to have to replace a lithium battery. Yeah. So the batteries we have in here are for eight, they're the Oasis Firefly batteries, and as far as AGMs, they have an incredible lifespan. At 50% of the discharge, they have 3,600 cycles, which is numbers that approach the old lithium numbers, and at 80% discharge, they're 1,000 cycles, and at 100% uh, discharge, they're, you get 600 cycles out of them. The lithium ions that you could take in their place, at 50% depth of discharge, they are 7,000 cycles, and at 
eighty percent of the redemption discharge, they're three thousand five hundred cycles. Right. So not only are you at least doubling your range, but you're also hopefully doubling the life of the batteries. They are cheaper. The thing about lithiums is they are cheaper by the amp power. Okay. And if so, I'm sorry, by the charge cycle. And if you use your boat in such a way that you're, you would actually use those charge cycles in some reasonable amount of time, then they're then they're absolutely the cheapest way to go. Okay. And you, the other way to look at them is you're you're buying a lot of you're buying basically all the fuel you're going to use all at once. Mm -hmm. And you do have to recharge the batteries, but electricity is a fraction of the cost right. of, of fuel. And so basically, you're just buying a very expensive fuel tank. Okay, so Jack, you've installed this on your own boat. You've been out and and. Uh, been around, done some trips, that kind of thing. Uh, how is life on the boat different with uh, with electric versus diesel? I think the first th the first thing I notice is that everybody else thinks you're not under power when you actually are. The, the, one of the lockmasters actually got annoyed with me because he thought I wasn't powering forward when I was, um, and because there's no there's no exhaust, there's no water pump getting pumped out, and there's certainly no engine noise. So. Unless they look, unless you look specifically for the wake, you have you have no, no reason to know. Another thing is that we're with the if you got yourself in a situation where you got irons or, you, or you're in a situation where there's boats around you, and all of a sudden you really would appreciate having that that engine for, to maneuver. With this, if you've got that button off, all you got to do is push that button and put it and put it in gear, and you're off. If you've got, right now, if we're sitting here with it on, all I have to do is, is just slip it into forward, and we've got power. Mm -hmm. and, and sometimes, you know, just having a little bit of power to help yourself through the, the tack or whatever, when there's all of a sudden somebody bearing down on you, it's, it's, it's helpful. Yeah, there's no no waiting for glow plugs and no, warming no, no, up no, no, and no, 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 no. you know throttling up to start and down to down to shift gears and that kind of thing. Yeah. It's just immediate. Yeah. Um, any other things about life on a cruising boat with electric power that's different? Um, I ask you to focus more on the sailing. Yeah, you're really you're really it's more about sailing now than it was because before you started up the engine and then it, the engine dominated the situation. And you put the autopilot on, and you kind of just forgot about it. Now, it's you use the engine or the electric motor in for for moments to get a little bit of to change your apparent wind, so just enough so you can get the boat moving. And then you turn it off, and you keep on sailing, and things like that. Whereas before you didn't do that, or at the sound, which is of course you, you see these all these lines of all these wind lines. So you get up to a wind line, you just power across the wind line, and then you just slip the throttle back into neutral, and you sail along. So how much how much differently does it draw with the system engaged uh, and in neutral versus just being off completely? It's a half amp. Half an amp. So uh, next to nothing, right? Yeah. So you just have it on all the time when you're underway, even when you're sailing? You, I mean, you certainly could. I mean, if you don't, all you have to do is push that button. Yeah. And if you're, if you're sailing, and the propeller, we, we ha uh, if the propeller is in reverse and dragging, it's regenerating and recharging the batteries. Got it. And so actually, keeping the system on, if you're making any kind of speed at all, you'll actually put something back in the batteries. It's worth it. And as we come up here, we're gaining amperage, we're generating over an amp, and we're only at 4.8 knots. And just, just the difference between um, like 3.8 and 4.8. Yeah. It's gained us more than an amp. So, and, and there's a little indicator, you won't really be able to see it, but there's a little arrow going in toward the battery. Yeah, and also the lack of a minus sign. Yeah. That's those amp numbers before had a minus next to it. So by, by sailing at about, you know, at about four knots, we're able to be more than replacing the draw on the system that it, it takes just to have it on, but then we're also actually repowering slightly. Yeah. Um, and when we were up, we, when we got to five knots there, we were putting in like two, two and three quarter amps almost. Yeah. And uh, so I, I guess I, it's still, it, it doesn't make easy sense in my head. How close, like how far away is that from regenerating, you know, it's a ways off, right? Well, there, let me give you an example. There's a Hallis 44. Uh-huh. It's, it's actually here now. It was in the Caribbean. And if he was, if he had... 
he was doing seven knots mm -hmm. in a beam reach mm -hmm. all day long. He not only filled his batteries for his for his engine, mm -hmm. but he took care of all of his house lights. Okay. He didn't have to run his engine because he was sailing all the time, but he didn't have to run his generator at all either. Yeah. All the power he was using on board, he took care of just just the regen off the motor. So and and it goes up substantially when you get it. I mean, five and a half doubles it. Mm -hmm. You know, six doubles it again. It just keeps going up exponentially.